Welcome to After the Pull, the video series where I take all of the current comic books that I read for the current comic book week and share my opinions with you guys. Now, if you're looking for the new number ones, well, I have a video series called Worthy Ones. So I'll leave that video at the end of this one so you can click and see what I thought of those new issue ones. Guys, I'm Mike Spider Slayer. Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. If you love daily comic book content, you came to the right place so why don't you consider hitting that subscribe button also if you love exclusive variant comic book covers check out mutantbeavercomics.com they have over 4,000 exclusive variants in their store if you use my promo code corner 10 not only can you save 10% off of your first purchase but every other purchase after that so check out mutantbeavercomics.com all right guys so we have a fun show for you today let's get started Crashdown, issue three. This is the penultimate issue. This is a $4 comic book written by Comic Tom 101 himself and Fire Guy Ryan. The art is done by Ben Templesmith here. The artwork is fine. It, is it the best artwork that I've ever seen? No, but it's good. It does its purpose. It gets its point across. It definitely shows you all the characters that are in their comic book. And in this particular issue, there's not a lot of action uh, that goes in here. It's just a lot of okay what are we going to do to survive right we have this planet that we've come across we sent a team of explorers down there to make sure everything is okay there are cryogenic chambers on the spaceships wind up opening early and now we have a captain here who's forced to make a hard choice to send nothing but the very best of the best down to the planet to keep the human civilization alive and we get to see that plan unravel and it's an unhumane plan but it's the only way to do it now there's a team on the inside on the planet itself already that suffered a horrific crash there was people that wound up dying one of the main characters by the name of allison wind up surviving but she got infected by some kind of like sea creature life and there's some weird thing growing out of her leg and we don't know what it is so this book definitely is very intriguing on wanting to learn what's going on with the main character if the humans are going to survive this whole experience to begin with so this is a good issue i like this issue overall it just keeps you guessing and for the first time these guys are writing a comic book my hat's off to them so i'm gonna give this one a b minus i was hoping for a little bit more action and honestly i don't know how they're gonna wrap this up in one more issue unless there's going to be another arc going forward in the near future so hopefully maybe i'll get the answer to that from them from comic tom and fire guy ryan and themselves if they actually watch this video so yeah check it out if you have not yet vengeance of moon knight this is issue four the legacy numbering here is 234 28 pages five bucks all right so we have jed mckay on this book and then we have uh alessandro Cap Capiccio does the artwork in here and I've said this every single time when it comes to the artwork in, in Vengeance of Moon Knight it's absolutely stunning it's gorgeous like Tigra is mesmerizing in here and check out this like like Moon Knight on a horse like it's so awesome um really good stuff here now in this particular comic book we finally get the reveal of who this dark moon knight character actually is okay and we get another actual like therapy session going on by andrea and this time she's hunting to uh hunter's moon in this comic on what you know everything means to him right and as this issue is going along we kind of get to see the action unfold as well to the point to where we actually see the unmasking of who this dark moon knight character actually is and honestly like this wasn't even a thought in my brain on who this new Moon Knight, Dark Moon Knight character actually is. I'm like, who the heck is this guy? Like, I actually had to do research to figure out who the guy is. Now, I'm not going to spoil that for you because I want you to see if you know the character, if you still haven't read your copy of the book. But again, it's outstanding artwork. Now, 
I do feel like this is not a perfect issue as it's been very repetitive with all these therapy sessions and we've been waiting for the reveal and for some people it might not be the best reveal uh, but for some others you might be like oh man that was pretty cool pretty creative and not doing a, a common character right so at the end of the day, I'm going to give this one also a B minus. And now, hopefully, now that we get the reveal, maybe we get a little bit more, I want to say, story progression with this overall story. No more standing around and freaking therapy sessions and shit. Let's, let's see what happens now, now that we got this reveal. Savage Dragon issue 269. Oh my gosh, guys, this book is hilarious. This is a $3.99 book written and drawn by Eric Larson here. Um, the artwork is, is fine. You know, it's like he's not the same artist as he once was in the days when he drew the Amazing Spider-Man. It's why I really loved Amazing Spider-Man. It was him and Todd McFarlane. And uh, the artwork is okay, right? I mean, it's fine. You can see the cartooniness in the characters, the muscle definition. There's just definitely some creative things going on in this comic book uh, when it comes to the fight scenes and stuff like that. And this this book is more like a it's like a Where's Waldo book. Let's just say that where it's like, can you find all the 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 r-rated scenes or x-rated scenes in this comic book while fights are going on like there's some ladies in here that got they're like these spider twins they got webbing coming out of their crotches you got mickey mouse doing some things in this comic book that he's not supposed to do um it's just it's just crazy guys it it, it is right that's the the webbing ladies that i'm talking about it's just it's weird stuff but anyway <laughs> what was this issue about well Savage Dragon is all about Savage Dragon's son now, Mal Malcolm Dragon. He's got a family, he's got kids, he's married, uh, and things like that. Now, most recently, they wound up going to um, San Francisco. They put together a group of heroes, and they're stopping bad guys. That's basically what happens. And there's this dude in here that kind of has a... Uh, a uh, Freaky Friday situation going on. This guy is supposed to be good. His name is Frank, and this guy is supposed to be, where is he? He is supposed to be bad. And this guy's name is Mr. Glum. Well, the good guy's in here, the bad guy's in there, he commits a crime, he winds up going to jail, and his wife has got to try to bail him out of jo jail, right? So that's the main plot. Then you got this crazy stuff that's going on in here with Mickey Mouse, who is like like a little, like he's a perv. He's infatuated with Savage Dragon's wife, and he just goes into places where he's not supposed to go. She doesn't like it. She's trying to kick him away from it. It's just weird, man. It's just out there, right? And honestly, even though they had that crazy scene in there this issue was actually probably one of the best savage dragon issues that i've actually read uh in quite some time there was good artwork the creatures were good in here and i think there's a story here where all these heroes have now moved to uh san francisco and i think there there can be some good plot lines here as long as eric larson releases this book on time uh, when he releases like two issues a year or three issues a year that doesn't do anybody any favors so this is like the third issue he's come out with already this year so you know he's beating he's definitely beating last year so not a bad story i actually really enjoyed this one it wasn't overly grotesque or anything like that there's definitely some sex scenes in there but i like this one so i'm gonna give this one probably a c plus it, it, it was better than it's been Superman 78, The Metal Curtain, Issue 6. This is the conclusion to the series. This is a 32-page comic for the price of $4, guys. Uh, this one was been is written by Robert Venditti. The artist here is done by Gavin uh, Goldry, if I said his name correct. This book definitely has the... Um, Superman 78 feel from the original Superman movies. It definitely has that vibe to it when you're reading it as well. This issue is really much a quick read here as Superman is doing his final battle against Metallo. And he does this battle going into it knowing that I have to change this guy's way of thinking, right? Because it's led to the belief, you know, that 
everybody in Russia makes Superman to be this bad guy, including Metallo himself. But when Superman comes to reason with him, uh, Metallo does the right thing. He does the honorable thing, and uh, he basically just sits there and takes his life into his own hands. It was a very heartfelt issue. I really enjoyed it, and it definitely was a nice conclusion to this series. It's definitely pretty much a point A to point B entire series, but it was a nice read. So overall, when I give the entire series a grade, I'm going to give this one a B minus. I really do wish there was a little bit more meat on the bone when it came to the story, but it was still a solid read. And if you liked Superman 78, I think you're going to like this series overall. So if you didn't give it a try, give it a try in, uh, in a trade and see what you think of it. After three months, it's back. The Sacrificers. This is issue seven. This is a 28-page comic for $4. The writer is Rick Remender. The art is done by Max Flamara. Flamara? I think that's how you say it. The artwork is nice in this comic book. I've always really enjoyed it. I think the characters look great. It's like this fantasy-like style of book. Um, we wound up learning about more of the daughter in this comic book and uh, her name is Saluna and she is dangerously weak she's on the run you know chased through an unknown landscape and in this entire book the narration is done with a story about what her mom told her right and uh her survival here is just insane she can't find food it's hard to find water again she's being hunted down and you just can't help feel her pain and suffering and then she gets tracked down by this crazy like it's almost like a symbiotic type of creature and uh she winds up trying to battle this creature and at the end you wind up getting to see what happens to saluna here and you're wondering is she going to survive or is she or is she dead right uh and you're just led to believe hey man i don't know if she can survive this but again seeing her whole story uh was quite interesting and you also get to see in the beginning of this book the ramifications of what happened because her mother died and we get to see kingdoms are suffering because of it really good book guys rick remender has something special with this book going on i'm always attached to every single page when i read it and i can't wait for more and unfortunately the book ends too quickly and uh is it a good thing yeah it's just like i waited three months and it's like i wanted more so i'm giving this one a solid a looking forward to what happens to Saluna and the other character that is in this comic as well. The Sensational She-Hulk. This is issue seven. Legacy numbering 185, 28 pages, $4. The writer is Rainbow Rowell and the art is done by Ig Guara. The artwork is good in this comic. Uh, I think it's enjoyable. Uh, you know, you get to see a depressed Jen here as she feels like she's losing Jack of Hearts. And honestly, I think she just needs to dump the loser already so we can move on with Sensational She-Hulk, right? Uh, here's some more of this, the artwork in this comic book. And uh, yeah, so obviously Sensational She-Hulk or Jennifer Walters, she should be on this vacation with her love, Jack of Hearts. And Jack has come across the person that's in his past that fought alongside with him. And that is Ganymede. Is that how you say her? Dude, I have no idea how you say her name. But she was like in Silver Surfer comic books. And they, you know, they fought together and they loved each other and stuff like that. And we get to see that. Uh, Jack has made a promise to her like when her mission was over like these two were going to hook up and like you know be a thing right and you can see in this comic book that Jack is actually confused on kind of like what to do because he's a very honorable person and this was a long time ago and you never thought that would actually happen but as this, pro this comic book progresses we wind up getting to see a a character here that offers her a particular job to go on a mission again to fight alongside with him on vengeance because that's kind of that's her thing right so she accepts this job and lo and behold that this guy wants 
She-Hulk as a, you know, as to get vengeance on her. And we don't even know, like, what she did to this guy because she's even clueless, right? She's just kind of like, uh, what, what did I do? You know, and then we wind up seeing, of course, you know, the fight actually happened and now Jack of Hearts has got to get in between his two women, right? Um, this book was okay. There was a lot of sitting around and talking. It definitely went in a direction that I did not see going. I did see like a love triangle developing here, but I thought maybe it would be like a threesome type of thing. <laughs> Don't take that the wrong way. Maybe they would go on adventures together and stuff like that. And I did like seeing kind of Jen like deal with her boy troubles and all she wanted was chicken tenders and stuff like that. That was kind of cool. But then it, it, it just went in that weird direction. And it's like now she's got to fight her. And I don't even know where we're going to go with this whole thing going forward. But I really have said this before. I always feel like in this comic book that we spend way too much time with Jack of Hearts and she just needs to move on with that guy. There's too many like red flags with him. He can't freaking hook up with her because he's got his power issues and now he's got this chick and like, come on, man, let's go. I mean, if you don't want to be with Jen, there's a problem with you, right? So let her be with, let him be with that chick and then move on and let's get on with this comic book. This book has potential. There's definitely good moments in it. I just feel like at times, it could be better. And those moments get smothered by Jack of Hearts. So at the end of the day, I'm going to give this one a C plus. I enjoyed it, but there's a few too many pages with this other character being in there that really doesn't fit, you know, a She-Hulk book. So I don't know. We'll see. Venom issue 32. The legacy numbering is 232. This is 28 pages for $4. Al Ewing is the writer here. Ken Lashley does the artwork on this one. The artwork is good in this comic book. Here's Dylan Brock right from the start. Uh, and, and in this issue, there is just lots of fighting and just grotesque stuff going on with the symbiotes in here. And it's just... It's just a cluster, dude. It's all over the place. People dying, people coming back to life, people killing Eddie. Eddie comes back to life. There's different versions of Eddie. This book has freaking Al Ewing all over it. I couldn't even begin to tell you what's going on in this book because it's so convoluted with all these different versions of Eddie, but Cletus has come through, or this version of the symbiote, has come through Meredith, who is the highest archie of King in Black, who is a Eddie Brock, and he busted through him, and now he's fighting all these different symbiotes, and he's trying to win, right? It's it's insane. It's like in your face, rock 'em sock 'em robots type of stuff, man. It's just it's all over. It's it's a mess. Like look at this. It's just like I'm reading this book, and I'm like, what's this fight? What's going on? And you can't tell like who is who in this comic because there's there's Carnage, there's there's the King in Black which is Eddie, there's Bedlam who's a symbiote, there's another version of of Cletus in here, there's Dylan in here who's supposedly dead, there's Finnegan who's a symbiote which I think is a version of, of Eddie, then there's Tyro who's another symbiote, there's Wild like <laughs> it's all over the place. And at the end of the day, I liked it because it was just one kick-ass fight. And it just looks like that at the end of the issue, the garden of where all this shit started from is being destroyed by Carnage. And maybe we'll just get back to a point where we just have Dylan, we have Eddie, and we have Carnage. And that's it. No more other weird stuff going on in some other universe like oh my god it's just insane but it is entertaining man I, I almost don't even know what to grade this comic book right it's just like i like it for the action but for the story it's just it's al ewing's name all over i guess i'm just gonna give it a b i mean it's definitely good it's just i think it's over my head because i'm a little slow for it <laughs> Let me know your comments in below, guys. The Avengers, issue 12, legacy numbering 778, 28 pages. This is $4 comic, written by Jed McKay. The art is done by Francisco Mortarino. 
Mm-hmm. Artwork's good in this comic. I liked it. I thought the characters and all the action sequences that happened in this comic are really, really good. I thought Scarlet Witch looked phenomenal in this comic when she's working with Falcon here. So that looks really cool. So it's just like when you're reading this comic book, you almost feel like you're in an Avengers movie. And I'm not going to lie. I did drop this book. I did not read the last issue. But when I heard that this was tying into the fall of X, I wanted to see what this book had to offer, how it was going to tie in and how they were going to take it to Orcus here. And we get to see that in this issue. We wound up getting to see our Avengers heroes go to a base where MODOK is actually at and 3D Man is actually at as well and they rescue these people and they bring them to the impossible city and we see 3D Man who is trying to come up with a contingency plan on how to stop the Avengers here. And by the time you wind up getting to the end of it, you wind up seeing uh, kind of the errors in the ways of what the Avengers, you know, kind of did, right? Um, they're doing everything right, but they forgot one important thing, okay? Uh, I don't want to spoil it for you, but seeing 3D Man at his finest in this issue was actually a lot of fun. And this honestly was the best Avengers issue that I've read since the series has launched. Issue 1 was really good as they formed the team, and then here in this issue, this was where everybody was involved in the action, trying to stop Orcus, and uh, it was just a good action-packed fight scene. That's what I loved about it, and it was good to finally see all the characters kind of working together, where Jed McKay in the past has always kept like, oh, Two characters are going to team up and you're going to go on this panel and two characters are going to go over here and you're going to go on this panel. And you do see that a little bit uh, in this comic book like I showed you with the Scarlet Witch and Falcon page like this. He has this in every book where it's like two of you are going to team up and you're going to tackle this and that. But we get to see a little bit more, you know, team chemistry in this. And that's what I liked about it. So hopefully he does more on it. So at the end of the day, I'm going to give this one a solid be definitely an improvement to where we've been when it comes to the avengers curious to see what happens in issue 13 x-men 33 this book is 28 pages for four dollars this book is written by jerry duggan and the art is done by joshua Cazera. all right let's look at the positive of this book um it's the artwork okay the artwork is absolutely uh, really good in this comic here we get to see a nice little scene with emma frost uh, I think we got the Reavers in this comic. We get to see Wolverine. Uh, we just get to see some cool action scenes in this comic. Real good facial expressions right there. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what this book really had going for it. And unfortunately, when it came to the story, I felt like the story definitely lacked. It was disjointed. I felt completely lost. Like, I haven't read a couple issues in X-Men in quite some time, and that's not the case. I've read every single issue, but when it comes to the main series, it just feels like it like it jumps around all over the place, and then I'm like supposed to understand what's happening, right? Like in the last issue, we wind up seeing, uh, what was it, La uh, Kitty Pride and Ileana come back together with Lockheed, right? Wasn't that it? And then it's like in this one, it's just like, we wind up seeing Dr. Doom's freaking mutants come and help the X-Men out. There was some guy that was supposed to um, help Orcus rise in case they fall. And the mutants or X-Men wind up stopping him. And then all of a sudden we jump to a part where Cyclops is like being, I don't know, interrogated by freaking Nimrod. And then all of a sudden this weird city comes out of nowhere like what the fuck is happening like seriously what is going on we just got way too many x books out we got fall of house of x and fall of powers in 10 we got immortal xn going on we got all these x books that are all connected to this fall of x stuff that it takes away from the main book to the point where you don't even understand what the heck's going on anymore and it's so dragged out it's like please end just stop just stop it already i gotta give this book a d minus this book would get an f if it wasn't for the artwork 
and the cool fight scenes and battle scenes and some of the uh, character interactions in it. But besides whatever's going on in here, I, it's just, oh my god, it's just so, it's so bad, it's so bad at this point. Like, Jerry Duggan does a great job with Iron Man and how can he have such a miss when it comes to the X-Men? I just feel like this project is just too much for everybody it just got spiraled out of control and now it just needs to completely end already batman issue 146 your legacy numbering here is 911 it's a 40 page comic book for five dollars your writer is chip Zardarsky, and your artist is done by jorge jimenez now this book has some phenomenal artwork in it uh you know, Jorge Jimenez needs to stay on Batman because that's what's really going for the title right now. We get to see all these, you know, different types of action scenes in here. You get to see uh, Killer Croc in here. You wind up getting to see some of the other Bat Family characters like Barbara and Nightwing in here. Uh, you also get to see Damien. Uh, you get to see Punchline, what makes her appearance as well, which I thought was kind of cool. And you do get some Harley Quinn in this comic book too. So it is nice to see all these different cast of characters. Now, the last issue was improved as we get to see, you know, uh, Batman Zur, Zur and R, uh, his conscious loaded into failsafe. And the big thing about this comic book is that Batman Zur, Zur and R is kind of like pushing the envelope when it comes to taking villains in right it's like he's not killing them but he's really hurting them pretty bad and he's got the other heroes questioning going well he's not using guns he's not killing anybody so it has to be bruce bruce conscience has to be in there right and so i almost feel like though they're just too stupid to realize guys that that's not freaking bruce wayne but they don't know where bruce wayne is they can't find him they don't know where he's at and things like that and it's just weird and damien i think is the one that's kind of you know by his father's side the most uh but even here he's still like hmm is that really my father or not you know it's like how long can we play stupid for also superman is in this comic and he's doing the same thing he's kind of just like i don't know bruce but yeah i guess you are bruce and then you know you're getting amazo in this comic too like he's bringing that online like come on man like guys wise up this is not freaking bruce wayne you should know better right i don't know and how long can we keep this storyline going on i feel like we've had fail save batman zur and r for just such a long time now it's like okay let's get to where we need to go and then maybe let's move on to a different story right so i don't know this book is better don't get me wrong but it's not great and i feel like a lot of the characters are just a little just too naive they're too trusting of bruce wayne not thinking that hey man bruce wayne is in danger you know so I don't know, we'll see where it goes. It's good, it's fine. It's not the best, it's not the worst, right? We've read worse Batman. I think a lot of people are really kind of shitting on this book. I'm gonna give this one a C plus. I liked it, it's got gorgeous artwork. I love seeing all the characters. I like seeing the Bat family. Like, it's just like, I hate how stupid they are sometimes, you know? I think that's the one thing that's drawing this back for me. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Batman right now. Void Rivals, this is issue eight. This is a 28 page comic for $4. The writer here is Robert Kirkman. The art is done by Lorenzo Di Felici. The uh, characters in this book are Dara, Proximus, Solilla, and Android. So you don't get the many characters in this comic book, but my gosh, this book is balls to the walls, action packed, in your face, so good, man. I love the way the characters looked in here. I love this new character, Proximus, who's kind of like this hunter that's going after our main characters. And in this issue, it's just a huge struggle on survival, on how these guys can actually beat this character, right? Now, we get to see a little insight of Proximus of when he was younger and his interaction with Solilla. So I thought that was very interesting. Now, this book has not had Transformers in it for quite a little, quite a while now, and that's okay because if it seems like this book 
doesn't need to rely on transformers all the time to carry it forward. If you introduce more transformers in there, that's totally fine. I understand that. That's okay. But I like how they're not relying on it and how it was just kind of a kickoff to get the series going. This book is excellent. I love all the characters in it. I love learning about their kind of the mysterious pasts and i can't wait for the next issue this is a phenomenal book this is an a plus for me i have not been disappointed by this yet gunslinger spawn issue 30 this is a 24 page comic for four dollars the writer here is todd mcfarland the art is done by carlo barberi we have gunslinger who's our main character then we have a new supporting character her name is Linda here. And what Gunslinger Spawn does is he's actually paying her to get him to a certain place and maybe to help heal him and things like that. Now, Linda is a major player in this comic book right now because Javier, who is Gunslinger Spawn, uh, is illiterate. The only thing the guy can do is ride a horse, kick ass, take names, right? And right now, he doesn't really have any powers. He can't really heal. So he's having Linda help him go to a pharmaceutical or pharmacy and try to get things to help him um, heal. And again, she's getting paid lots of money to do this. Gunslinger gets out of the car when he's told not to and he comes across some bullies who steal his little baby lizard and then they get into this fight. Let's just say that Gunslinger kind of kicks their ass and uh, and that's that right and so it was kind of fun there's not a lot that happens but there is a crazy cliffhanger that's going to kind of lead to what's going on in the story in the future we get to see this building that he comes across and this this mark is the mark that these people used to brand people and they killed his family so he wants revenge on his family so that's where this story leaves off so very interesting to see was this the best issue of gunslinger i ever read probably not there's a lot more action but again it's just a setup of what things are to come so at the end of the day i'm going to give this issue a solid b a good read setup we'll see where it goes from here so there you have it guys there are the rest of the comic books i read for the week do you agree with these grades do you disagree let me know in the comments below and as always guys i'm going to leave you more content for you to click on and of course guys support the local comic shops keep buying keep collecting but always remember read your comics so we can have awesome conversation guys thank you so much i'll see you real soon bye